Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. I want to share with you an article I put together on the Lean Six Sigma Definition.com website. It's about single stall production systems. This might be something that most people aren't familiar with, so I wanted to explain it and talk about some of the benefits and some of the downsides of this model, but um, I think you'll find it really interesting. So we're all pretty familiar by now that the single piece flow assembly line is one of the more efficient ways to run a process. But then I learned about the single stall production system, and I had seen a video that was done at Canon in Japan, and it really kind of blew my mind. So in the notes, I'll have a link to the uh, all these videos, but I'll try to explain what it is to help you understand the concept. So what does single stall mean? Um, it's a method of work where one highly skilled worker is trained to perform all the steps of the process by themselves. So imagine someone who's working at a pizza place. They would be taking the order, preparing the dough, putting on the toppings, cooking the pizza, putting it in the box, and then checking out the pizza with the customer. So they do the entire process all by themselves. So in a production cell, then they would have to learn all the different assembly steps to be able to do the whole thing by themselves. You can teach somebody a very simple part of that one process and they can learn that pretty quickly and then they're up and running and available for use on the assembly line. So in a traditional assembly line, workers are studied and then each job is balanced to match the other steps. We call that level loading or workload balancing. But there is variation worker to worker, which can lead to slight inefficiencies. And then there's less motivation to improve your own process time as it will result in an unbalanced line and excess inventory, or it will raise concerns with your supervisor. In other words, whenever somebody is doing a process and they get done early, That should be a red flag for the supervisor to ask, why are you done early? Did you skip something? Did something go wrong? Or did you find an improvement method? But regardless, people are trying to finish about the same amount of time, so the work flows nicely at the tack time. And that tack time, again, is the pace that you want to maintain to be able to keep up with your customer demand. When product or services make changes, Um, A rebalancing of the assembly line is required, which can take quite a bit of time to adjust. In a single stall product or service, changes can be incorporated in much less time, maybe in hours or days. So in a single stall system, if the worker makes improvements to their own work, it allows them to start the next step earlier because there's no one else to have to wait for. And ultimately, this brings down the total completion time. There's also a stronger sense of pride in the work since they completed the entire order themselves. And they can take ownership that I made that entire product or I did that entire service and anything that went wrong with it is my responsibility. Whereas in an assembly line, no single person has total ownership of the final product or service. Assembly lines also require many workers and lots of work in process, depending on how many different stations they have. And so if there's any absenteeism, the line will be slowed down or unable to be run. And when a problem arises, the worker can resolve it much more quickly than when a problem arises on an assembly line. Usually that requires a team of people to come over and take a look. But since that person is the one that probably found the mistake, they probably know what went wrong and they can correct it themselves, or at least do the initial troubleshooting before they need to call in for help. So on this link I'll provide here, there's a couple different videos. There's uh, four different videos that they show. First one is a video from Canon. They go through and they explain the benefits of the single stall system. The workers in the single stall system are called Meisters, which is translates to master craftsmen. And that is the multi-skilled worker with a broad range of skills and knowledge across multiple processes. And they are paid more than the regular assembly line workers. The first video is actually part of a larger documentary, an NHK documentary, that includes Canon, but it also features Sanyo and their transition to what they call multitasking, which is the same thing as a single stall. I don't like the term multitasking. I don't. I think that has got a, a bad connotation to it. 
um, we can't multitask and this isn't really multitasking because you're not trying to do things at the same time. You're just doing a lots of different tasks in sequence. In the second video, they show the, the difficulties that they go through, but then eventually they see that the person eventually gets it and actually can run faster than the assembly line. Then the third video is from uh, also Japan showing the Toyota Mirai assembly in Japan. And they have a slight variation to Canon's approach. They have one vehicle, but they actually have multiple workers working on that single vehicle. But it's all contained in one area. And so it's not on an assembly line, but it's more than a single person doing it. So they split up the roles a little bit. And so I think that's a little bit of a variation on it, but I think that can also work as well. And maybe as the workers are developing their skills and learning more, maybe eventually they'll get to a point where they can do it all by themselves. But for now, they need a couple people. And then the final one is a, a video showing a, a larger stall because it's based on equipment. All the other ones are mainly assembly work. And so you see the employee walk through all the different stations, very much like if you had one person working at the pizza shop um, and they would walk the pizza through all the different operations through the oven and out the door. So that's where you have the advantage of if they can figure out ways to streamline and make their process go faster, then nothing is getting in their way of doing that. So they can really streamline that. So I really encourage you to check out these videos. It took me a little while to figure out why that might be a better approach, but um, I definitely see that that's kind of the ideal you want to get to is that one person can do everything. Again, that's going to take a long time to develop that skill in that individual, but once they can do that, you know, their potential for improvement is almost limitless. So I'd be curious what you think about that. Let me know if you have any other thoughts or run across anything else that looks interesting that you'd like me to talk about in a future podcast episode. Thanks for listening. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.